Hello my friends, welcome back to the farm. As I promised, we are going to do our leather making video today. We're not making the leather, I guess. We're making a knife sheet out of the leather for that knife we just got done for the birthday and the family, which is Sunday, so we need to get this done. So this is something we can do inside, so we're not out in the cold. However, it is up to 30 degrees today, so it's like a heat wave outside, and the sun's out. So we're going to get rolling. Without further ado, we've got our stuff together. We've got a couple small pieces of leather here that we'll probably be able to get our sheet out of these. If not, i got a whole side of leather here. I picked that up in Tennessee for a smoking deal, 60 bucks for the whole side of leather. We were down visiting our friends Dave and Stephanie and came across an Amish guy that did uh, saddles and leather work. And he sold that to me for super cheap. Great deal. So we got all our leather tools here. And I have a bag of leather scraps too if I need scraps for anything. So we're going to get the process going. Um, you want to start out with some cardstock or some heavy construction paper and I'll show you what to do with it. So I'm going to make what's called a mountain man style sheet and I'll show you a picture. I haven't made one of those before but uh, we'll get it figured out. It looks pretty basic. The only thing I'm going to add is a little strap to hold the knife in the sheet. Uh, so it doesn't fall out if you're running around out in the, the sticks. So let's get our construction paper and we'll start making our pattern. So we destroyed a couple pieces of paper figuring out what we wanted, but that's why we use paper and not leather. But this is the design we came up with right here. And we're going to have a little belt slot right here. We're going to double stitch around that. And then there'll be a stitch all the way along the edge of the knife in there as well. Now we're doing a fold over design. And obviously the leather is not going to fold over that tight. So we've allowed a little more on this side for that corner that's not going to be quite as tight. You can see we've left quite a bit of room uh, in here along this edge. We're going to lose some of that. So normally, when you cut one of these out, say you had a strap built into this when you cut it out that was going to come back over to the other side, there would be a right and left to this, uh, depending on which side the wearer is going to wear it on his side or on his belt. Now, being this is a fold-over design like this, it's basically a carbon copy left and right side. So we don't have to determine which is the suede side up. When we put it together, we just will fold the suede side in, which is kind of a no-brainer. But if it mattered, say you had another little piece coming off of here or something for a strap, uh, you would need to determine which side is the suede side, and I usually write on the uh, on the pattern so like this pattern here that I've used before you can see that I've marked suede side on that so when I cut things off I cut the bulk of it off of the big piece that way you're not trying to wrestle that big piece around and then you just got the small piece I have a real pair of heavy shears that I use but uh, some people use like an exacto or a razor knife but I find that this works just fine for me. Now, if you got really tight corners, like almost like a 90 degree corner, take your leather punch and punch a hole right in that corner and then cut to that hole. And that way you don't have that sharp corner that wants to tear out a lot easier if it's really sharp. That corner will want to rip rip down so if you can avoid that I do the same thing on steel when I'm cutting out like a piece of steel to make something out of if I got a really sharp corner I'll drill a hole in that corner 
and it'll kind of keep that corner from cracking out because it's got a nice rounded edge on the very inside of that corner. Now as you're cutting this out, you want to be pretty close, but you don't have to be perzactly on the line. And yeah, that's a word, perzactly. Word we used in my family, kind of like ginormous or uh, fugly, you know, com combination of two words. So perzactly, perfect and exactly. So the reason you don't need it perzactly right is because once you get these edges uh, glued together, we're going to come back through. We're going to go out in the shop where our belt sander is. And when we fold it, glue it together, we'll make sure that edge is perfect, perfectly aligned and glued together. So it's not exactly together. We'll come through and we'll sand it perfectly flat all the way around once we get it glued. So you can see how stiff this is. It doesn't want to bend. So what we're going to do is we're going to go get this wet right here on this edge. We're in the middle here where it's going to fold both sides. And when you get it wet, it makes it much, much more pliable. In fact, when people do, um, when they do punch work on here, or what do you call that, tooling, on the leather, they get it wet and then the tooling marks stay in it. So We'll go get this wet and get this folded and we'll clamp it together for a little while and kind of let it dry. Well, we got her folded over. We wet the edge real nice and we folded it. And uh, while I had it wet, I went ahead and stamped an initial in the side here. Actually, both sides. And then once we got it folded, we cut a piece of leather to go inside. And what that does is it creates a channel for the knife to fit in real nicely without a lot of movement because when we fold this together once we stitch that if you didn't have this piece of leather in there the edge of that knife would be working on those stitches all the time and it would eventually come apart and this also makes space for the knife blade to sit inside so we just cut that out of another piece of leather and then if you remember, we're going to cut a belt slot here. So rather than have the leather go have a piece here and then have nothing down here for the leather to come together, we just made a solid piece. So it would be solid all the way across instead of having a, a void in here up against that little spine that we would have put in there. So we've got this in here with contact cement. We put this side in first. And you can see we're a little long on the edge here, and that's fine because we're going to trim that down later. So this piece is down, and then we've got the other piece glued up with contact cement. Make sure you don't buy rubber cement, different stuff. And then you want to let this stuff get almost dry to where it's just barely tacky. And that's when you want to stick it together. And you want to be careful sticking this together because you're not going to get a second chance once that's put together. But we're lined up fairly well. We'll start on this end, putting it together, and work our way down and make sure we're pretty much aligned on the edge where we need to be. All right, after glue up, we took it out to the belt sander, and we trued up this edge. And the reason we do that, so when we get the stitching done, it ends up in the right place on both sides, because... You can imagine if this was crooked, your stitching would come out different because you're trying to poke it straight through. And then we're going to put grooves in here for the stitch to lay in. So everything's got to be nice and true for everything to line up right. So we've got that done. You can see it's starting to dry a little bit. Uh, also, while we're out in the shop, we made these little antler beads that uh, we're going to use. For our little hold down thingy so what we're going to use for that is just some leather uh, boot laces so we're going to start getting this thing ready to stitch 
Next thing we're doing is we're putting the groove in the letter, leather for the stitches to go into. So we're going to start up here at the top, right where the laces for the stitching will start. It won't be even with the end. It'll be back about the same distance as we're going in. So we'll start right there. And we just work all the way around the edge. And this is why we had to make those edges line up. So basically that groove, or this groove, would be in the same spot on both sides of the sheet. We figured out where this other line of stitching is going to go, and we've grooved that. And then I used this, uh, the awl, and I punched down through the top to where the holes lined up on the back, and then I made another groove on the back. So now we're going to center that hole or that slot right in between these two lines. Okay, we've got the belt slot cut out. We did it with a little X-Acto knife. Now, once you get through, you got to true it up, and then you got to do the inside of the corners. So, for these corners, I just use the very tip. That way, you can make the corner and just clean the slot up like that. And then, once we're all done. <coughs> We're going to burnish the inside of that slot so it'll look a lot better. And then the other thing we got to do is we need to chamfer the corners of this sheet. And for that, we use this little tool here. And this, what this does is it takes the outside corner off of the leather, that sharp edge, and gives it a knot. A lot cleaner look on the corners and we're going to go all the way around the outside here and then we're going to do both sides of this as well so when it's time to stitch we got to mark our holes we're going to do it with this little tool here you just start out in that groove about where you want your first stitch and then you just go along that groove and those little points are going to mark your holes. Make sure you stay in the groove. So now I've taken this little awl and I've gone along and I've punched, not all the way through, but just made a really good divot to better mark all of those little stitching holes. And now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to try something I've never tried before. Uh, I got this from a, a YouTube channel called The Art of Craftsmanship. He goes through with a little drill bit on his drill press and drills all these little holes one by one and it gets them really nice and straight all the way through and then he comes back through with his stitching holes and stitches. So I'm going to do that real quick and see how that comes out. Should be, It should work nice. So we took our stitching awl out to the shop and I measured the needle and compared it to the drill bit. The drill bit came out to be a 332 drill bit. You can see it came out fairly decent and the holes line up perfectly on the back side. So that's the plus. I just used my little tabletop drill press that I have. And you can see there is a little bit of tear out or push through on the back side. But when you run the stitches, that'll all kind of disappear. So pull your thread all the way through. So there's your, your start. So now keep your thread pretty short. And then you're going to go through that second hole. Push it through. It's going to make a little loop. Take your end of your thread. Go through the loop and pull and pull your stitch all back through go to the next hole push it through pull it back 
creates that little loop. It's kind of a tedious process, but uh, kind of therapeutic too. Pull it through, push it back through, next hole. Tightening those stitches up as we go. Use a little loop, put it through the loop. When I first saw the stitch hole, like, how the heck does that work? Because I knew kind of how a regular sewing machine worked. I'm like, how are you going to get both sides of the stitch? So when you push it through, you want to hold on to this. Make sure you're not, your hand is not holding the thread. So it'll actually push the thread back through this side and pull some of this thread through. And I'll do it one more time just to show you what I mean. Put it through our little loop. Pull it back through. Now we're going to push it through the next hole. We're holding our thread here. We're making sure we're not touching that. And as we shove that through, it's tightening up all the threads because of the tension tack there. So you can see our threads right there. Right there. That's what you want. Now I'm not going to bore you with this whole process, so I'll bring you back when we do our last couple stitches, and I'll show you how to end it up. We're down to the last few stitches. So pull your loop, put your thread through like that. Now you watch when I pull that through, it'll pull that knot into the hole. See that? See if you can see it next time here. So we shove it through, pull the loop. All you're doing is pulling back on the, the awl and it makes that loop already. Now since we're getting close to the um, last couple stitches, I'm going to double knot this one here. So when we pull that through, going to have a double knot on the inside of that hole. So it just pulls that knot right into the hole. We have a double knot there, so we're going to do that again on the last couple stitches here. And I'm actually going to go tie in with the other line of stitches. Come through a second time. Now watch. Pulls it right into the middle. So we're going to go back through this hole. Like that. One, two. Pull it in. And now that we've got a good knot in there, we take our little razor knife and we put it right next to the edge, lay it flat and slice it through like that. Sorry you didn't see that one. So lay your knife right on the edge like that. Now you don't have any any thread sticking out. There we go. 
So now what we're going to do, we got everything stitched up. We're going to put a little leather conditioner on this leather. It's going to keep it from drying out and it's going to help me burnish the edges. So this is what I'm using. I got, got this stuff from, I think it was Hobby Lobby. They have a little leather section where you can pick up little odds and ends. So let's move that out of the way. Little cotton dauber. And then we're just going over the whole thing. And it's going to darken your leather a little bit, but it's um, not going to stay that way. It'll lighten up as it dries just a little bit. And you don't have to worry about getting this on your fingers because uh, it washes off. You get all the edges too because that's going to help you burnish those edges. And we'll show you what we're talking about when we say burnish. Get some in the belt hole here. Now, if you've never seen a scabber or a sheath like this, kind of a mountain man style, that's why it's got the one belt loop, because your belt will go through here and then through the backside and come over the top and kind of hold it to your body. And because we got a wider than a belt slot, you can tilt the knife any which way you want, depending on whether you're doing cross draw or a regular right or left hand draw. And you can turn it either way, so it makes it kind of ambidextrous, but with the, uh, the loop here that we got is a little less ambidextrous, but it still work if you wanted to wear it on the other side. So we got a coat all the way over this thing, all the way around. And it'll kind of look a little uneven as it dries, but once it dries all the way, it'll look more even. Handling it with my hands doesn't help with that. But. We'll let that soak in a little bit and then we'll take a soft cloth and we'll kind of wipe off the excess. So, let me put this down, put our lid back on so we don't make a darn mess. So burnishing, you want to take your little burnishing tool and go in one direction and you're laying those little fibers down on the uh, edge of that leather. A little spot there I missed. Here we go. So one direction. See how that edge looks much nicer already? Kind of like it's been worn for years. All right, we got her all done. That's what she looks like. A little knot on the back side. So if you want to take the knife out, you just pull this loop over, pull your knife out, put your knife back in, pull this loop over, pull down on that. She's in there. Looks pretty cool, I think. I got another another bead. Maybe I'll put that one up there. Maybe that would look cool. I don't know. We'll see. I kind of like it with one. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I still got to burnish this in here, but that'll give you an idea what she looks like. I thought it turned out pretty cool. So that's how we did the leather. 
It uh, turned out pretty nice. I like this uh, Mountain Man style sheath. I might make me one for one of my knives because it's pretty neat. It'll rotate around to the position of comfort when you're wearing it. So until next time, I hope you enjoyed our video. Stay safe, stay healthy. We love you guys. See you next time.